Hi, I'm Marshall Ramsey, Editor-at-Large and Editorial Cartoonist of Mississippi Today. And we have a special edition of Mississippi Stories. And I tell you what, let me throw a word out for you, the word crop. So what do you think of when you hear crop, right? You think of maybe corn, maybe soybeans? No, 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 no. We're actually talking mental health today. Crop stands for Congregational Recovery Outreach Program. And it's a new initiative, a grant-based initiative that is gonna be able to, well, help reduce the stigma on mental health. And one of the things you, you quickly discover about mental health, there is a huge stigma and there should be. And I'm very happy to be joined with the very talented Natalie Moore. Natalie, thank you. Now, real quick, what is your title? Because you got the coolest title in the world. I used to be a peer recovery coach, yeah. but now I'm a peer wellness coordinator. So I oversee some grants that we're gonna do across the state. That sounds real cool. No, so you were just a coach, now you're a coordinator. So you're like over a bunch of coaches, right? Yes. See, I'm pretty smart, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Um, I'm not, trust me. Look, you've got a great story and you know, we're going to talk about crop, obviously, and the great work that they're doing because, um, I, that, like I mentioned a little bit, mental health number one is health, right? We got to get past the whole. There's some great barrier between your brain and your body. It's it's all one thing, and also too, there are some huge statistics right now with people challenged with mental health problems in this country, and the fact that they either a struggle to find places to be able to get mental health help or they're reluctant to and what crop does is actually help people be able to get into a safe community a faith-based community one that they're very familiar with and to be able to get the help from from folks like you who have walked the walk and talked the talk absolutely yeah all right so Tell me a little bit about you and about how you ended up sitting next to me in this really uncomfortable chair. <laughs> Very uncomfortable chair. Yeah. I will say, um, you know, my journey with mental health started when I was 16. Yeah. Uh, I was first diagnosed with depression then. Oh, wow. And the very next day I found out that I was pregnant. And wow. so if depression was not a big enough thing to kind of address, being a teen mom was something that was even harder to kind of combat with. Yeah. And really ground myself as a teenager, thinking yeah. how my life would change. Um, I've spent many years trying to ease my way out of the darkness, and yeah. some of that led to being hospitalized because um, I felt that I wasn't worth being here. And so through that and through a lot of therapy and community, getting close to people yeah. who understood, um, I've been able to stay out of the hospital. Um, be stable, live a happy life, and um, hope is available, but it's just, it's a process to get there. A lot of times depression is brought on by trauma and some, you know, issues, childhood trauma, different things like that. You obviously, I mean, number one, to have the courage at 16 years old to be able to go and say, hey, look, I got, I got an issue here, I got a problem, I, I need some help. What was that process like for you? So actually, um, my story is kind of funny. I had, had a lot of stomach pains, yeah. and went to many doctors, multiple hospitals, just in agonizing pain and they could never figure anything out. And I actually came to Jackson and met with a GI doctor and he was like, is your backpack heavy at school? I said, no. He said, do you have bad acne? I said, yeah. no. And he said, well, are you stressed? And I said, I'm 16, I'm learning how to drive, I'm living life. And he said, no. He said, your brain is telling your body something's wrong. Yeah. And so at the time I was like, that's not it. This is not right, but honestly, it was my brain telling my body, you've got to do something. Yeah, you got to make some changes. And, and what kind of changes did, when, when you got that diagnosis, uh, what kind of changes did you make? So, honestly, at that time, I made no changes. I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> um, the next day when you get the news. The next day, yeah. sitting on the bathroom floor with a positive pregnancy test was just, it slid me back 10 steps farther. I um, so, I pushed that diagnosis away for probably about five years. And then that's when things started to kind of pile up yeah. um, I started having really bad thoughts that I just shouldn't be here I didn't really? need to be alive and if it were not for friends and my parents who got me the help that I needed and got me into a hospital I probably wouldn't be here today that's so incredibly hard and people don't really understand that it's so hard when your brain's lying to you because it's like suddenly I mean it could be beautiful day sunny you you obviously had a beautiful baby and you, you you know you had a lot of good things going on but but your brain was literally saying no 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 and it's like you know but sex you went to the hospital you got the help did you get therapy and so forth and yes yeah, so uh, after leaving i you know when you go to the hospital they give you resources and yeah. it's up to you once you leave to really 
look for those resources and get out and find your own community. And so I took the time to find a therapist who understood. I do a little therapy shopping. Some are great and some just yeah. don't fit, you know, um, what you're looking for. And I found one who means the world to me. She listens, but she challenges me yeah. to be better. Because um, sometimes I can still be in that mindset of maybe I'm not good enough, um, especially things like this. I never thought I would be here. And these are yeah. things that she said, one day you're going to be able to do a lot more than what you think you can. Well, let me just go ahead and tell everybody right now, she was right. <laughs> you're doing a great job. And also, too, I just want to say thank you for sitting here and being vulnerable and for being able to tell a story. Because, you know, it, it was something that I was telling you a little bit earlier that I was very blessed to have um, malignant melanoma. And I say that not totally ironic because it changed my life for the better. Made me make some good changes in my life. But I really had bad anxiety from it. And, and it was very difficult. It caused me some mental health issues also because of just the fear on that. And we did a 5K race and, and my friend Keith Warren and I did. His dad had died of it. And we were able to do this over 10 years and help other people. And just the sheer act of doing the work toward something that scares you and, and so forth really is healing and you have literally taken something that would have floored most people and you're now actually working to help other people and that's huge thank you yeah and don't you feel like that just being a well, coach for all that time and now a coordinator don't you feel like that that's really good therapy also absolutely so it's an accountability thing yeah. i have to stay well so that i can help other people get well uh, which means that i have to learn new things all the time what used to work for me doesn't always work now and so i have to continue to take an active role in my recovery mm -hmm. um, so that i can help other people through their walk you've been doing this what now for two years um i have been doing peer work for yeah. about five years for now. five years okay yeah um how did you get into it so funny enough, I found, I was looking for a job on Indeed, like everybody does, yeah. and I found a job that uh, the qualifications were that you had to have a GD or high school diploma and you had to have lived experience with mental illness. There you go. And I said, I fit this. <laughs> I'm going to get the job for sure. And yeah. I, I did. And it was, at first I had no idea what it was about. So I did what most millennials do. I Googled and I um Instagram messaged everybody who I saw that they were a peer specialist and they gave me good advice and they told me how they were changing lives. And so I said, I want to be a part of that. What was the first experience like when you when you got to actually help coach somebody through a process like oh this? Oh my goodness, there were so many, but I think the first was, I was on a program where people had um, a lot of hospitalizations. So they were people who weren't able to find a community yet. Mm -hmm. And seeing people go from seeing a hospital every two months to going a year with yeah. ever, without ever going to a hospital, that meant the world to me. Even if it was just one or two people, we were able to change their lives and show them you can live outside of the hospital. You can function in society and live your best life just by getting connected with the right people. I mean, literally, that is the goal of therapy, isn't it? Is it being able to not only to cope through day to day, because a lot of times, you know, anybody's ever like had any issues with mental health they know there are there are things out there that can trigger it and so forth and it's learning how to be able to pull yourself back from that isn't it yes it and is and it's it's a constant um i wouldn't say struggle but it's something that you have to work towards and it's something you have to put effort towards so um it's non-linear recovery yeah. is something that that some days are great and some days you'll look at me and say oh my goodness who is let her be a spokesperson for anybody but I mean, every day is new and I have coping skills and people around me who can put me back on that right track. One of the things, like I said, just getting to know you and hearing your story that impresses me is that you are you are doing the work to change your family tree. Absolutely. And, and you've got three amazing kids. I do. I have um, two boys and a five month old baby girl who- Oh uh, my goodness, is, you're busy. She is the light of our lives, honestly. She was a sneaky baby. She hid for a little while, but she is here, and um, I'm thankful for her. My mom always wanted me to have a girl, and so she passed away two years ago from oh, suicide. Yeah. And so I think my daughter was kind of like a gift from her, yeah. and she has brought so much light and joy into our lives. Natalie, that is so hard. Number one, suicide is a very difficult thing, and I, and I know your mom struggled too. How have you been? Because grief is like a bruise, you know? A lot of times you think you're getting better and something will hit it and you're just like, oh, you know, it's like the pain comes out. You, but you seem to be an incredibly strong person. 
Absolutely. It took a long time to get here. I will yeah. tell you. Um, right after she passed, I got on Google and looked for resources for people who had lost loved ones to suicide. Yeah. And I found a group. They meet every Wednesday on Zoom for two hours, and that saved my life. There were people who mm -hmm. understood. You kind of grapple with the thought of, like, should I have done more? That guilt. We call them cows. Coulda, oughta, shoulda, wouldas. And I was like, I am in the thick of cows. I have a million yeah. cows that I'm hurting. And um, they taught me so much about not letting her life be in vain and just keeping things going. Definitely. You're a coordinator now. How many people do you have? How many coaches do you have working with? So right now, I don't have any. I know that sounds horrible, but I... Well, that's um, a little easier, isn't it? It is. Okay. It is. So we are starting some new programs across yeah. the state. And so um, we're looking to have some respites where people can go and stay where it's non-clinical. So you're yeah. going to meet peers who have mm -hmm. been through similar experiences, and you're going to get help in that way instead of having to maybe go to the hospital or the emergency room. Well, that's a, that's a good place to bring in crop because crop is a little bit non-traditional but I think it's a very smart way to be able to handle uh, getting people who might be uncomfortable going into a traditional setting to be able to still get some help. Tell us a little bit obviously we, we've got out what it stands for which is it's a congregational recovery outreach program. I'll make sure everybody gets that. Talk about a little bit about it and how it came about. So CROP is a part of um, Mississippi PHI. Yeah. They are grant funded and they are a program that really is working with churches. Yeah. Um, they have three churches here around Jackson and they're getting people involved in community. So bringing faith and mental health together and bridging that gap between the two. Um, they do a lot of trainings and education as well as referrals to help people see that you can have both. You can have mm -hmm. mental wellness and you can have your faith and they can be, um, you know, they can coincide where when someone comes to the church and says, hey, I'm struggling, I'm yeah. having um, X, Y, Z issues, they can really be met with people who not only know from a faith-based standpoint, but also that mental health standpoint um, to end the stigma yeah. about um, receiving treatment, but also getting that help that they need. I know, especially since the pandemic, and I think you and I were talking about this a little bit, beforehand, you know, obviously the isolation that we experienced at a time. Human beings, I know this is, might be a little bit of a shock. We actually have to be around each other. Me, on the other hand, I'm pretty happy hanging out with my dog and, you know, sitting on the couch and watching Netflix. But that said, after a while, I think we discovered that we need each other. And I think that had a detriment. And the virus itself, I think, messed with us a little bit also. Right. Yeah. It could cause a lot of anxiety for people to say, you know, I want a community, but I don't know about getting out because of the, um, yeah. the virus. But I know a lot of people turn to social media and the internet for resources. Um, and so that's a really big thing now is being able to have platforms where people can speak up and speak out. And to be a reliable source of information as well. You talk about the faith-based community and crop in there. How does that work? I mean, do, is there like you provide training for, for people within the churches or how does that? Do that? Yes, so crop pro provides trainings. Um, right now, again, they have three churches that they yeah. have um, partnered with. That's super. Um, but one of the biggest things that they're doing right now is uh, vamping up. Um, there's going to be the Mississippi Mental Health Faith-Based Summit, and it's going to be an opportunity for people all over the state to come together, learn from each other, build connections and community, and start hard conversations that have to happen. Yeah, and I think that's Number one, I mean, to have those hard conversations, it's good to have a community of people that you realize are on the same path as you are. It does help. Yes, it does. Yeah, and then you've discovered that yourself. Oh, yeah. Without like-minded people or even people who've been there and understood, yeah. it's kind of hard to find your ebb and flow. Um, you know, books can tell us everything, and we can educate ourselves with books, but if you've lived it and you know it, um, it makes it a lot easier to kind of connect with people and understand yeah, you, you were talking a little bit about your kids, and, and you realize that your, your kids are absolutely gorgeous kids, and I stalked you on Facebook. I did that. Um, I, I will say, they're, they're beautiful, but they're, you know, they're biracial, and so they're going to face some things that maybe you never had to face as a kid a little bit. So for you as a mom, too, you're going to be able to, this, this is the kind of thing that will teach you to be able to help to be able to, your kids be able to face some things that you may not understand. Absolutely. So... 
I have to acknowledge that there are things that they're going to face that, um, you know, I may not have gone through as uh, a youth because times change yeah. with electronics and the internet, but yeah. also yeah. just race is something that's different. So my mm-hmm. children will face things that I will never understand. And I hope that people who come to the uh, Mississippi Mental Health Faith Based Summit can build that connection so that we can make generations of people who are educated with mental health so that one day when my kids need something, I know they're probably going to say, oh, mom knows it all. She's just going to tell me what to do. But I can turn to someone else and say, hey, my son is struggling or my daughter is struggling. Yeah. And they can understand from that perspective. So it sounds like CROP and particularly the summit, which is, like I said, this is number one, it's free, which is amazing. It's open to everybody. So you can come down. It's at the Jackson Convention Center. But it sounds like what it does is in a way it just creates resources and community and be able to have conversations. Absolutely. We're trying to bring people together. And that's the first step of everything is bringing people together, start those hard conversations, have um, different activities where people can understand things better um, and maybe bring some new points of view, especially when bringing faith and mental health together. Definitely. What are some things that you've learned in the last five years that have kind of surprised you and shocked you? Oh, in the last five years, a a lot of stuff has happened. I've learned to find joy in literally anything. So whether it's feeding the baby at night yeah. or trying to get my three-year-old to even eat, uh, we make games out of it. And I think finding the joy is what I've learned. Whether it's doing things like this, I'm able to use my voice mm-hmm. to um, reach a broader level of people. And I'm enjoying life. So and you're doing well. I am. I, it's, it's something... It's, a few years ago, I would have been like, no, this would never happen. But today, really? I can say that sky's the limit, and hopefully I leave a legacy that my children will have a world where mental health isn't talked about so negatively. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. The, the, what are some some advice to people if they're sitting there right now watching this thinking, I really want to get some help, but I don't want so-and-so to find out, or I don't want you know to be seen in the waiting room or whatever. What are some What advice would you give to them? Some advice I would give is just make sure that you are taking care of yourself. And so when we think about uh, mental health and mental wellness, it's not always about getting treatment in a building or with a therapist. Sometimes it's doing things that you um, do every day, whether it's taking a bath or taking a walk, breathing. Um, Little things to make yourself feel well and stay well are the best things. Um, We always talk about simple, safe, and free. Not everything is free anymore, but um, things like going to the park, Mm -hmm. those things can get you to a place where you feel comfortable opening up to others. That's, I love that, simple, safe, and free. That's good. I I know every morning, like for instance, I get up early and I take a a one hour walk and it just gives me some head space and gives me a chance to, but exercise is a big part of it. Obviously that takes care of that eating well. I try not to eat a lot of junk and so forth. So, I mean, there's just some little things to do. What are some things, like I said, you're, you sound like you're very grounded and in the moment. Absolutely. And it takes time to be grounded in the moment. Um, in the past, I would get so anxious just having a conversation with someone. Um, but I think now. Like this? Like this. No. I, I would have never done it uh, <laughs> probably even a year ago. But um, I think you have to seize the moment and take opportunities. Life is short. Um, something I've, I've learned with the passing of my mom, but uh, you got to live. You cannot let your brain lie to you. Yeah. You can't live in fear or darkness every day, so you got to live. If you have that moment where your brain's lying to you, is there a way to, for you to be able to pull yourself out of that waterfall? I really connect with like my spirituality, so I'll yeah. pray, but I also have people who hold me accountable. So I'll call someone and say, am I overreacting about this, or am I looking at this the right way? And they'll say, no. You're this is right, you're doing the right thing, or they'll say, Natalie, you got to get it together. And so, pull you, myself up. You talked about the churches that crops in, in now. How's that going with, with that so far? They are doing really well. They're, um, ha- they have a great partnership. Um, I know that crop is working diligently to help continue to educate them and more. Um, so, the sky's the limit for crop. That's awesome. That is incredible. You talk about the summit that's going to be coming up April 25th, that'll be on a Thursday from eight until three at the Jackson Convention Center, free, which free. we like the free, that was a part of that on there. Um, 
where can folks find out more information? So they can go to www.msphicrop.org and they'll be able to find information about registering. Mm -hmm. um, we're excited. We want to know how many people are coming, so registering is a plus. Um, and if you register, please come. I'm going to be there. It's going to be a fun event. You get to meet a real celebrity. Yes, you get to meet me. Yeah. And so um, it's going to be a great opportunity for people to learn yeah. um, and network and just get connections that are needed to bring um, to bridge that gap between faith and mental health. Natalie, thank you so much for having the courage to share your story. It was beautiful. Thank you. This was fun. This was fun. Thank you so much. Any, any last thoughts before we go? No, other than just take time to live life. I know um, that's something that I'm learning to do, and it's important because you can get so stuck in that darkness. And so be a light, live, and just keep going. Don't give up. You truly are a light. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that's another edition of Mississippi Stories. And come back. If you'd like to see more, you can go to MississippiToday.org. And until next time, I'm Marshall Ramsey. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.